So I am super excited about this now. It's just been so hard to see the vision, but I feel like it's really starting um, to get there now. This. Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Olina and I'm a knitter from Norway and welcome to my knitting podcast. Here I talk about all things knitting, my current projects, my finished projects, my planned projects, um, all types of yarn and just everything that comes to mind while I sit here and chat. And I'm so happy you wanted to hang out with me and chat with me today. But before we get into all of that, I thought I'd share a little bit about what I'm wearing. And today I'm wearing my uh, Novice Cardigan Chunky Edition by Petite Knit. And this is knit in Drops Air and Drops Kidsilk. This was actually my first ever experience knitting with Kidsilk and getting a garment I could actually wear. I think this was my second time actually knitting with Kidsilk, but the first time the finished garment was comfortable enough for me to wear. I knit this in back in 2021, I think in June, maybe of 2021, maybe May. I was very heavily pregnant and summers here are still quite cold so I just wanted something easy to throw on. As you can see it is quite big on me because I made this to fit me pregnant and I love this. I love this when I made it. I think I lived in it like wore it every single day for the last month I was pregnant and then also the first year after having my son, I, this was my uniform. I lived in it every day. It's perfect for spring like this now. I can wear it open. I can open it all the way. I can wear it like this. So it keeps like my chest area here warm. It's perfect for winter because I made it so big so I can easily fit all of my other sweaters under this, even my really chunky ones. So this is a great layering piece and also it has a lot of memories to me because uh, for me because I used it so much my son's first year and it's also just really comfortable because it's been worn that much. But I have to say my yarn choice, I chose to do it with air and kid silk. And I think I would do that again just because of the price of those two yarns, but it definitely isn't as plump or as thick maybe. I don't know how to explain it, but when I knit this up, uh, the air had a lot of air in it and it was thicker and just with more like cushion to it maybe. Um, and as I've been wearing it for almost three years now, it's definitely gotten a lot more t thin and lost a lot of its shape and <laughs> become a little bit shapeless. Um, the air is just uh, not as plump anymore, but it's still, I still think it looks all right on. When I take it off, you can't really tell what's what. It's just a pile of knit at that point, but I still love this very much. I would still do it in air, but drops air definitely loses a lot of its airiness after a while, after you've washed it a couple of times, after you've worn it a couple of times. This is a quite heavy piece that also does something with the air. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, but I don't think it's made this any worse that it's lost that um, plump it had. But I, I didn't even notice it, to be honest, at first, but I made I used this so much the first year, so one of my friends that saw me wear this all the time asked if I could make her one as well because it looked so comfortable, which it is. So I made her one of these for Christmas one or two years ago and that's when I noticed how big a difference there were, was between the new one I was making, still in air and kid silk, that was really plump and soft and squishy, whereas this is still really soft but it's not as plump and squishy. 
Uh, so I really noticed it then when I was holding them like side by side, measuring, trying to make them about the same length. Um, so that's definitely something to keep in mind if you're making this. If you want to have a more plump one, a more like the one petite knit has with more squish to it, I definitely I definitely wouldn't choose air because it loses that quality after a while but it is a way cheaper option and I think it turned out very well in the end but that is my novice cardigan as you maybe can tell I, <laughs> I love this I feel like I forget about it sometimes because I keep adding really nice pieces in my knitted wardrobe but I always go back to my old pieces in the end and this for me I, every spring and summer this is a piece I love wearing around the time I made it um, and I don't think I'll ever get bored of this I do kind of want another one um, just because I love this one so, so much and I want it to last for as long as possible so maybe I could divide the wear and tear between two different cardigans but I'm not quite sure I I love the design of this cardigan enough to make one exactly similar I think parts of why I love this is the history behind it and when I made it so I don't know but I do really love this one and I would really recommend it because it is as in the name it's a novice cardigan i think everyone who really wants to could make this one it's a really simple straightforward pattern it, everything is explained super well so i definitely recommend this if you're interested in a cardigan like it but that, all of that aside we can talk about my actual projects i've been working on this week and as always we'll start with my old whip and move to my newest ones and this week i've actually done quite a lot on my oldest whip and my oldest whip is my wedding dress and this part of the wedding dress has honestly not looked like anything <laughs> as long as i've been working on it it's just been a uh, like flat piece of knitting I've been working on and calling it my wedding dress but this week I actually had the time and the energy and the brain energy to sit down and figure out at least what I hope is figuring out the back um, so I picked up stitches along each side of the back of the dress and did an i-cord edge for the um, edges and on that i cord edge i made these little holes so i could um, thread a strand through it and then i also made just a regular i cord strand and that left me with this so it's a bit hard to see now that it's all threaded but here you can see a bit of the i cord i made on the actual wedding dress and with all these holes I had to do those a few times because I needed the hole in the eye cord to be big enough to be able to get this eye cord through it but I also didn't want it to be any bigger than just barely squeezing it through through because I felt like that would again look a bit ugly if there was just a big hole here here you can see it's you can't really see any gaping around the eye cord and that's kind of exactly what i wanted and to make the holes in the eye cord i just did regular eye cord bind off but every time time i wanted the hole i instead of uh, connecting the last piece of the eye cord with one of the stitches on the wedding dress i would just do a couple of like regular eye cord rows i think i did two regular iPad rows and then on the third I would connect back to the wedding dress again and that made the perfect size holes and then I had to do that on both sides and honestly it was a bit of a pain when I had figured it out that was like okay it didn't take me that long to figure out 
um, the spacing between the holes for the iPod um, or anything. I had to try a couple of times, of course, to do the actual holes, but it was pretty straightforward. It was just so boring. I think doing i cords are okay, like the like, actual i cord. I think that's okay and quite fun, honestly. But doing the i cord, uh, like casting off using i cord or doing any like edging with i cord, I am not the biggest fan. I think it looks really pretty and I choose to do it quite a lot but it's not the most fun part of knitting for me so here having to do it twice right after each other was not the most fun also because of all of these <laughs> strands that I'm not weaving in and this time it's actually not just because I'm lazy with weaving in ends but because I don't want to weave in any ends before I'm sure I won't have to frog anything because if I weave in the ends it will be much harder to frog but because I have so many ends literally everywhere, it's hard to navigate the knitting now because I never know what strand of wool I'm actually working with. I also have not completely cast off the stitches at the top here, so it's a lot stiffer at the top because of this stitch holder, which also makes it a bit hard to get everywhere easily with the knitting. But I did get through it, I did the i cord edge and then today I just had to finish the actual i cord and thread it and I think the hardest part of this whole thing was threading this back. I tried so many times and I was never happy with how it looked and I wanted this bow here at the end and I wasn't happy with how any of it looks I think. I threaded it and ripped it out and threaded it maybe a million times but I think I'm happy with the final result now and it's a bit hard to show of course. I did get to try it on after I'd finished threading it on um, so I'll show a picture of the back when it's on. I did also film it, I think, so I can show that video as well of me just trying it on. That was uh, such a nice feeling to be able to try it on and it fit and I was quite happy with the fit as well. I don't love everything about the fit yet, especially on the back, but I think that's just because it doesn't have straps. So when I try it on, it just would slip down my back all the time. But the next thing now is straps, so hopefully the next time I try it on it will have straps and it will be even more comfortable and better to look at. But I'm definitely pleasantly surprised. I have been a bit worried about this whole thing fitting and looking okay when working on it because it has just been a flat piece of fabric, so it now being closed in the back and me actually being able to try it on has been really nice and when I tried it on it also was a bit easier to try to figure out where to place um, the straps and I have tried it on well enough to be able to place the straps in the front before but it's been really hard with the back because that's been so open but now that that's closed, um, I think my idea is, because it's going to, when I wear it, it gets pulled out a bit. So I think my plan now is to continue this uh, cable as the strap. I think that might look the best and also the straps will be quite close together on the back then so they won't slip off my shoulders. So I think the straps will be the cables just continued and then I'll Kitchener stitch them in the front here where I've marked. So this is as far in uh, as I'll go and then I'll just work my way outwards. And I think that could be cool. I think a cable strap definitely will be cool. I just don't know if where the cable and the stockinette stitch meet. I don't know how nice 
that will look but I'm also planning on doing embroidery at the front so maybe that will help but that's at least what I plan to do. I don't know if the cable here, if I continue that and just sew it down, you know, I don't know if that would clash too much, but hopefully it won't. I think I'll just have to try and see. Um, but that is my plan so far. And then probably once I've done the straps, I think I'm going to do uh, I-cord edging everywhere around the straps and the neckline and everything just to have a nice finish. And that's also going to be the way I get to cast off all of these other stitches and I am really excited to get this stitch holder out of there because um, while it's really nice to have a stitch holder in the stitches now it is not the best when working with it but yeah hopefully I will have finished um, the straps by next week and then the top will pretty much be finished I am still a bit undecided about the sleeves, but the sleeves I can very easily go back in and figure out later. Now I just want to figure out the main parts of uh, the top so I can actually start working on the skirt so I can start actually seeing what this will look like and also very importantly see how the weight of the skirt will affect this top if it will be pulled on too much or um, yeah, just how that will affect it and how long of a skirt I can have without it being too heavy. But that is the main <laughs> wedding dress uh, progress this week and I'm so happy to finally be <laughs> working on it again. And then the other part of the wedding dress, let's see, it has <laughs> uh, with this one it's a bit hard to show because the needles of this one is so much heavier than the actual thing I'm knitting, so it's always a bit of a mess. But here is the mohair skirt. I have made a bit of progress since I showed it the first time last week. Um, I did stop. Oh, these needles are getting the best of me. Um, I did stop working on it this week once I ran out of the first skeins or I have a little bit left of the blue one but when the white one ran out I stopped working on it um, and this is how far I came with just the first two skeins. I haven't measured yet but I have something here to measure with. Um, let's See, I got about 13 centimeters just from the first um, skeins. I think I have 10 of each, so this times 10 is the length I'll get. And this is, um, I'm going to tie it in my waist. Let's see. This is about that length so it about reaches my butt now and I want it to be as long as possible so that's going to be quite exciting but I haven't really added any stitches um, since uh, I did the eye cord so since I got 13 centimeters now that's what I'm going to get every time because I haven't added any uh, stitches so I'm really excited to see how um, long this skirt can get. With this I don't think weight's going to be an issue at all because this is just 50 grams um, and it's two skeins. Kid Silk is just so ridiculously lightweight but I must say that so far I am loving the result this is getting me. I think it is definitely a good amount of Poof. Again, it's hard to show on these needles, but you can see how much bunching there is even on this 100 centimeter needle. So 
I'm really excited to get even further on this so I can like try it on and see and when I get a bit further also there will be easier to see the puff because the needle won't be like right there um, but yeah this is it so far I also love the color I think it might be a bit hard to see on camera but this like sparkles it's almost um, like very like um, it's almost like the ice when the sun shines on it in winter and it just sparkles or fresh snow that the uh, sunshine nuts on and it just sparkles so I definitely think this will be perfect for a winter wedding here where there is lots of snow and everything I think this will be the perfect thing so I am super excited about this now I've been a bit scared <laughs> working on this lately actually because it's just been so hard to see the vision but I feel like it's really starting um, to get there now this is like the parts I have now and of course this will have a skirt part as well and some straps but this is pretty much what it will look like and now I'm just so excited now that I'm starting to like see progress. I'm finally working on at least one of the skirts. This thing actually looks like something now at least. So now I just want to work on that all the time. And that is such a good change from like almost being scared to work at it. Because I have just been so unsure about all of my ideas. But I guess it's just, I just have to like jump into it and just try and that's what I did and it has worked out pretty good and the times it hasn't uh, I have learned a lot from it and it has been easier for me to go back and figure it out than when I just sit and think about it before actually trying. So I'm going to try to remember that going forward so I don't get too much in my own head about it but that is the um, wedding dress so far and I have some other projects as well of course to show and this week I didn't get to knit as much as I'd hoped to and wanted to because at the start of the week I was quite sick and itchy and my fingers were really swollen and just hurt so I couldn't really knit at all because just bending my fingers hurt so I gave them a rest I don't know what happened but I just gave them a rest and I think by like Tuesday, Wednesday, I was starting to feel better so I could knit more again. I did get some knitting done before then but not a lot. So that definitely affected how much progress I got on the different things and I prioritized the wedding dress. But this is my next oldest project and I did get a bit done on this um, here. I was just about to start doing this crisscross of things um, when I last podcasted and now I've done a bit more than half and then I ran out of my skin again. That's really been a theme this week that I've knit on one project and then I ran out of yarn and I do split splicing now, but sometimes I find that a bit of a drag. So instead of doing that, I've just moved on to the next project and then finished the skein on that project and then moved on to another project. And I've done that all the way around until I'm back on this project. But once again, I'm podcasting and I ran out of yarn. But I got about that far into it and again, I really enjoy the crisscross uh, pattern with Pergint. It is so fun, love the stitch definition. I really enjoy everything about it. Um, so I definitely am going to do the split splicing on this today so I can continue on it because I think this is also the last thing before the ribbing, which means that I get to do this, which is fun. And then there's just 
double ribbing and then single ribbing and then casting off and then I can actually really try it on which I am super excited for. This is also a bit of a dream sweater and this color. Another really fun thing about this project is that when I work on it out and about I get so many compliments both because the Ingrid pattern is really beautiful but also because the color is super beautiful so I can't wait to get to try this on so I definitely think I'm going to be working on this tonight um, I haven't double checked to see if this is the last thing in the pattern but I think it is maybe you're supposed to do this one more time or something I can't completely remember um, but yeah, I'm super excited to try it on. I also talked a bit about the neckline last time and people were split. Some said uh, they would rip back and do Italian bind off and that's something I have considered and some said to leave it and that they liked it and some said that they would leave it and like wait and see and I think I'm in that um, I think that's what I'm going to go with because I think it looks um, okay. I yeah, I think it looks okay. I think it's also been growing on me this past week, um, and I do really like folded over necklines. That is my favorite neckline to do. If it is a single, like just a ribbed. Uh, color I will almost every time change it into a folded down one but what worries me a bit with this one is that it's so big that I'm worried that with use it will like grow and just flare but I am definitely going to wait and see I think once the body is done and I'll be able to try it on that then that will also show me a lot more what it will actually look like and of course once I get to actually block the whole thing that will show me what it will look like but I think until it, I get to block it I'm just going to hold off uh, I might try to do an elastic in there just because with folded over necklines that I like to put in a tiny elastic just to keep it curved inwards so it doesn't go like this but I think I am going to end up um, keeping the neckline for now at least and just working on the body and eventually on the sleeves also working on the sleeves I'm excited to see how that will affect the neckline because then that will add a bit of weight to the shoulders and pull on the sweater a bit but yeah I'm definitely just in the wait and see uh, mindset with the color. I don't think I'll have enough yarn to make a sweater for my son with this same color. I don't think there's going to be enough yarn because I still have at least one maybe one and a half maybe two skeins left to go on the body and then both sleeves as well so that's going to eat through a lot more yarn um, so I don't think I'll be able to make one for my toddler and honestly I am a bit tempted to just buy some pergint in the color poppy because I think it would be a really cool match and my son really likes the color I have to wait to see a bit though when this is done how he feels about this one but if he really liked this one I think I might break my yarn band to buy him a sweater quantity of the pigment in the color poppy and I think that's okay to break the yarn band as long as it's yarn I get that I know I'm going to use and I'm going to use for a very specific pattern and like right away um, but yeah I'll have to see how much yarn I'm left with after this if I can get away for example with only buying 
one skein for the ribbing for my sun sweater that would be really great one or two skeins for the ribbing um, if I like almost have a sweater quantity I also think because of all of the, st uh, the texture that I might get away with two different dye lots if the dye lots are not that uh, different but I, that's something I'll have to come back to once I am actually done with this. I can't start to overthink that. Now I just have to see what actually happens with this one. But this is my Ingrid and I am so excited for her. I really hope I'll be able to finish in April because this is supposed to be my self-care knit for April but I don't know I don't I'm not 100% sure I'll be able to finish this in April because I have so many other projects that I also want to work on but this is definitely a project I want to be able to prioritize more than I've been able to this week another project i've been working on this week and that i think i said last podcast that i wanted to be done um is the eva cardigan jr i wanted this to be done so i could show the match um because i already have the eva in a pretty similar color i think almost the exact same color just not the same yarn but I just did not have a chance to finish this since my fingers hurt for such a big chunk out of the week. But I have gotten pretty far. I did finish the body and in true me fashion I did not read the pattern correctly. But in this case that turned out fine because the only thing I ended up doing was to have a bit of a longer body and a bit of a longer ribbing which really won't hurt anyone it just will make this cardigan fit a bit longer so that i did manage to finish that but it took of course a bit longer because i made it a bit longer um and just today i got to start on the button band here i've um, just marked off where my top buttonhole will go um, and I've tried to space it out because it is currently on the needle but I've tried to space it all out on the needle so it's actually possible to see so it just won't all be scrunched up but this is what it looks like currently and I love the look of this it looks so tiny and cute and every time I knit cardigans and sweaters for my son I'm always afraid they will just end up being like too big or too wide or too narrow and too long and I still have not gotten used to the proportion of like toddler nests versus baby nets. I just the proportions always scare me but every time I actually get to cast off the body and start working on something else it all comes together so I'm really happy with how this looks now. I am about halfway on the button band. I'm at the row now where I'm supposed to do the buttonhole, so I have to figure out the spacing of those. Um, and then I just have the, left, the rest of the button band to go, and then the sleeves. Um, and I think all of that is going to go quite quickly because kids' sleeves are kind of small, the circumference is small few stitches and way shorter than adult sized sleeves so I think this is going to be done quite soon but I today I'm only going to do the button man and then this is probably going on a bit of a break so I can work on the Ingrid but maybe once the weekend is done I'll be back to working on this uh, because I do really want to have it finished. I didn't get to finish it by this podcast but definitely by the next podcast I want to have this finished. My son is also starting to grow out of his cardigans. He really wanted to wear one of his cardigans today and that was a really tight fit. So it's definitely about time that he starts getting some new cardigans in his closet again. This last year I've been so busy doing 
all of the gift nets that the head start I have on his wardrobe has kind of been eaten up because ever since I started knitting for him like before he was born I've had a bit of a head start because I knit so much before he was born I think he had his whole wardrobe for the first year done before he was born and I've kept that head start but since I've been so busy doing all of the gift nets um, this last year, I've lost a bit of that head uh, start. I still have it when it comes to sweaters and I think hats, but I don't have it when it comes to cardigans. Definitely don't have it when it comes to pants and socks and mittens and all of the accessories. I just barely scrape by uh, knitting in time, but I... I'm knitting this cardigan and then I am also, I have the Carl's cardigan that I just need to weave in and do the buttons on and then all of a sudden he'll have two more cardigans in his wardrobe again. So hopefully that will help. But this is the Eva cardigan and I'm knitting it in yarn from my grocery store in this Mjuk Vestavin in this really deep uh, dark navy blue. I love this yarn. I was really skeptical to it the first time I worked with it because it's yarn from my grocery store so I didn't have too high hopes of it being good but I think this yarn is so great to work with and it wears really well. I made my son's Ingrid sweater in this yarn just not this exact color so it wears really well. It's really comfortable to work with. I really like the like feel of the yarn and just yeah everything about it so I feel this was such a great buy even though I did not have high hopes for it I'm glad I chanced it unfortunately my grocery store doesn't sell this yarn anymore but I'm glad I got it when they were doing a sale so this is where I'm at I think this is my fourth skein. I am a bit over halfway with my fourth skein and in total I'm supposed to use six. So this skein I'll probably use up doing the button band and then about one skein for each of the sleeves I imagine. So I am really close to being finished now. I'm definitely over halfway done and I am super excited for us to be finally able to match. This started out as a plan for us to be able to match I think all the way back in September. I made my Eva cardigan and ever since I've been supposed to make my son's Eva cardigan but it's always just been pushed aside for some other plans I've had. But once I finished the melange sweater someone reminded me of this match that I've had the yarn for for so long and Instead of pushing it off again, I just cast on even though I had so much else on my needles I just cast it on and I'm so glad I did because now we are super close to finally having this match But that is Eva cardigan and then my last active project this week um, is a project I didn't really intend to cast on because I already have three active pro projects. The wedding dress is kind of two projects because of both the skirt and the wedding dress but I don't really count the wedding dress because that's supposed to be like a long-term active project. So I have like two projects that are like active active, the Eva and the Ingrid. And I kind of thought that I would just keep to those so I could use my knitting time more on those. But I was just way too tempted to cast on something new. And this yarn, Drop Daisy, in this color was just screaming my name. Both because I want to keep knitting for my cousin's christening just so I don't end up having to stress knit at the last second and because I have been really excited to try Drop Stacey for so long I've had some green Drop Stacey, this my son has gotten into so it's a bit of a mess but I've had this green Drop Stacey for so long but I've never had the time to actually start working with it 
but I do, I did really want to try Drops Days here and since this is a gift net with a really strict deadline I felt like I had a good excuse to cast on. So I did and with the Drops Days here I'm going to uh, knit my cousin's are Carl's cardigan and I've made the Carl's cardigan a couple of times now so that is starting to become a quite mindless project for me. It looks really effectful but this smock patterning is quite easy to get into and it's very easy to read what you're supposed to do so I don't have to keep looking at the pattern. So one evening when I was supposed to pay a lot of attention somewhere else uh, the ingrid would not work because I have to pay way more attention to that. The wedding dress I definitely couldn't work on because I had to put a lot of brain energy and thinking into the wedding dress and I think the Eva I don't know what it was with the Eva the Eva was also at the point where that was just not the best maybe because the Eva is such dark yarn so none of my project really fit what I needed so I decided to cast on this curls card again I cast on with um, Italian cast on and then just started doing the smock and First of all, it looks so good in this color. I think I need <laughs> some smock. Maybe the Jenny is better or something myself in this color because this color is great for smock knitting. Um, and it was just so... I was not able to put this down and I've knit the Carl's cardigan before and it is really an addictive pattern but it's never been so, uh, so addicting as it, as it was with this yarn. Um, the Drops they say is just the perfect yarn boat to do the smock. It, the texture is really nice, the color of this Drops they say is really nice and it is so incredibly soft. The only breaks I could force myself to take from knitting on this was to just feel the fabric because I don't think I've ever felt a fabric so soft. Of course, the Superwash Merino that Drops has is quite soft, but there's something about non-Superwash wool that is really soft that's just even softer and in a bit of a different way than Superwash yarn is soft. So I've spent a lot of time just petting this project because it is so soft. So. After just this little bit that I've done, I really, really, really recommend Drops Daisy. It is such a good yarn to work with. It's so comfortable on the hands. It makes such a good fabric and the stitch definition is great. So if you are wanting to try out Drops Daisy, I highly recommend it. Uh, this is just the first out of two Carl's cardigans, so we'll see how excited I am about that the second time around, but so far I'm loving it. I think I have about 10 centimeters now, I'll check, because once uh, in a while I actually find this. Okay, so I actually have 12 centimeters, and I think I'm supposed to have like 16. Uh, before I stop working on this and start doing the sleeves. So I am really close to being done with the body. That's also the really fun part about knitting for my twin cousins. Everything they I knit for them are so much smaller. See, this is the cardigan I'm doing for my son and then this is the one I'm doing for my twin cousin. So it's really great to have a break from like the big pieces I make myself or my son to just work on something tiny and super cute um, which also just moves faster which again gives me more motivation but here again I did stop when I ran out of yarn just because I had other projects to work on and also I didn't I wasn't in the mood to split splice just then yeah, but this is another project I do really want to work on, but I think I'm going to keep this as more of a mindless project. Um, I have a couple of centimeters more with mindless knitting to go, and also the sleeves on this uh, are quite mindless. The decreases on the yoke are not, because then you have to make sure you knit the smock 
correctly and everything like makes sense while doing deep creases so that's not mindless but for now this is just going to stay my mindless net so I can focus on some of the others especially the ingrid because I really want to get somewhere with that now I feel like that's really been on the back burner for a little while but this is the curls cardigan I think I decided I ended up deciding to go with the 9 to 12 month size just because the twins will be about one year in the winter um, so I thought having a sweater which fits in the winter would be and fall and winter would be nice and also since it is a jacket I don't think it has to fit like that snugly an oversized jacket for a baby is okay because yeah I just think oversized jackets are okay so that's what I decided to go with I would rather it be too big than too small so this is the 9 to 12 month size and that is the last active project that I decided to do this week and again what I learned last week it's been really fun to just knit on whatever I feel like knitting, cast on whatever I feel like casting on. I have stopped myself a bit this week from casting on because um, at one point it can be a bit too much but I'm allowing myself to cast on all of the like smaller projects and baby nets and toddler, toddler nets but I'm really trying to not have more projects for myself than the wedding dress and then one other project for myself um, even though I really wanted to this week to cast on the blouse number one using this color of drops Bebe Merino. I wanted to so much that I even made a swatch because the blouse number one I think is net on five millimeter needles and the drops Bebe Merino is meant for three millimeter needles but since this is Merino I thought that um, having a really like uh, holy very open uh, gauge would be nice because then I could still use wool and it being warm but since it's a summer garment it would be very breathable so I just wanted to make a swatch to make sure that I would be able to and it would not be too holy and this is it so if I stretch on it you can definitely see that it's very breathable but if it's just laying flat this is it and I'm quite happy with how this gauge uh, swatch turned out and what it looks like and of course after knitting this I just wanted to um, get started even more than before I did the swatch so that's a bit of a mistake uh, on my part doing the swatch but this is definitely something I want, want to make space for this week even though the ingrid might not be 100% done but I also think this project will just be like a side project because it is on such big needles I just feel like it would go faster a summer project on big needles I just feel like in my head goes really fast but at least this week I got to figure out that my yarn choice might actually work out of course that might change when I start working the actual pattern and doing what the actual pattern says I haven't read too much into that but so far so good I hope um, but that's one thing that's really been tempting me this week and I really wanted to cast on and then of course we can't forget that I actually finished something this week and I feel like it's been such a long time since I actually finished something but this week I did I'm just trying to check all of the strands away the strands are not woven in yet this is the Moby slipover baby this is knit in 69 months and this is the first of two this is the first part of my twin cousins christening outfit um, this is knit in drops baby merino in the color north sea and I think it turned out 
really good. I can't wait to block this because now I feel like it looks very thin and long but when once it's been blocked I think it will look quite a bit better so I'm excited for that. Uh, but I can already see that this is going to be cute. I think that sleeves flare a bit um, too much for like my liking. I don't think the sleeves turned out or I don't know who would call it sleeves but the edges for the armholes did not turn out as good as I would have hoped. I think they flare a bit too much. Maybe I beat up too many stitches. But I also don't th think that anyone except me can really see it because I saw it when I was working with it very up close. But when I show it to you like this, I don't think it's really that noticeable that I think there might be like four stitches too many on each of the um, edges. But it's good enough. I wasn't annoyed enough that I decided to go all the way back so that's I also think blocking will even it out I really hope blocking won't make them flare more um, but this is the first one I think I ended up using 85 grams to make this in size six to nine months so just under two skeins and I still have the other one to go. The other one will be made in also drops by Merino in the color sage green. So this is how they're going to be together. I just have to finish the Carl's Cardigan first. So just to show kind of what the outfit will be like. This is it. So you'll have the slip over and then the Carl's Cardigan over and I think these textures look good together and I also think the colors look okay together so I'm really excited to actually finish the jacket so I can see that a bit better just how it works out and these are one size smaller than the jackets because I felt uh, that a slip over that's very oversized it might not be that comfortable and could be quite bulky if you're trying to layer it and both pieces are oversized. So I tried to make this one a bit more like true to size and what their actual, actual size is going to be. So this can be more tight fitting. So I went with six to nine months. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased to finally have finished our project um, since I've just been so busy casting on projects lately that I've never actually had the time to finish any. But this is the first little um, Moby Slip Over Baby and I also, this reminds me that I have to go and see if my son's Moby Slip Over Baby still fits because we are heading into a time of year where there are more like occasions where you need pretty clothing like uh, supply our um what's it called independence day certain my then he needs something to wear i like to make him wear pretty knits so certain my and then we have a confirmation that we're going to and a christening so i need to check and see if my son's um, slipover still fits him and if not I might have to make him another one and I don't know if I'm going to make him another mobile slipover or if I want something more plain or just something different but this reminds me that I have to go and see if he has anything but those are all of the projects both finished and active for this week and then also this week I was so lucky to have such a generous follower who reached out to me and wanted to give me yarn. Thank you so much, Marit. And I got quite a lot of yarn and I've not been able to go through it all and um, have plans for all of that yarn. I definitely have to go through my stash again sometime soon because I've, I'm very bad at like staying on top of things. 
so my stash has turned into a bit of a mess it's not as organized as this as it was when I organized it last so I have to go back and organize my stash again and put all of my yarn back into my own online stash and everything so I can have a bit more control but some of the yarn I got I definitely have plans for or I just really love and want to have plans for it so I have picked out a few skeins from what I got to just show and share my plans for and then I need to figure out my stash it'll probably take me a week or something just to find everything and put it down in my <laughs> knitting journal and in the knit and out app just so I have track of it everywhere I go what's in my stash but once that's done I'm definitely going to organize my stash again and maybe if you're interested share all of the plans I have in my stash this also I'm supposed to have the plans for what I'm making next in this shelf and that has not been what this shelf has turned into and I also have two other shelves I need to put up back here I just need to remember it sometime my fiance has time but if you're interested in a video video about that let me know and I'll make one in the upcoming weeks but the yarn I got um first off a plan I'm really excited about is this yarn and if uh, <laughs> you know the Marius sweater pattern these colors might be familiar to you but this is the colors of like the traditional Marius sweaters I know I've talked about that in a previous podcast that I I really wanted a Marius in traditional colors because I have a Marius but not in traditional colors but this is navy blue, red and white, the traditional colors of the Marius and I did get enough to make a Marius in the traditional co colors I think I haven't um, found my Marius <laughs> pattern book yet to double check but I really want to turn these skeins into a Marius sweater and I think I actually might do the really traditional one the one with like sticking for the sleeves and everything which is scary but my friend just did it so I might get some help from her and my grandma also does sticking quite a lot so I am in safe hands but that would be a great project both to work on my color work to get a traditional model sweater and to learn sticking so that's something I'm really excited about and then I got quite a bit of cotton merino in different colors and cotton merino this is dropped cotton merino is a totally new yarn type to me so I'm really excited to be trying that out and just in time for summer as well so I'm definitely going to be trying to make some summer clothes using this I might even make two blouses number one because I really want a blouse number one in the drops baby merino yarn but I think it could be nice with this one too and I'm also probably going to make a sweater for my son in this just probably one of the regular sweaters I do just in this yarn that's cotton and merino so that he can use that in summer I want to make it a long sleeved sweater because of the UV protection and just protection against the sun and um, so he can have it long sleeved but then I think it would be really nice to have some cotton so I'm excited to try that I haven't made my mind up 100% what I'm going to do but I'm super excited for it and then some yarn that I don't really know what to do with it all but I just have to show because I love the colors is this Pictiles extra fine merino I think this is DK weight look at this color I think I'm definitely in like a uh, period of my life as a knitter where I just love red the Ingrid sweater that's red uh, my Christmas dress that was red and after the Christmas red I've been obsessed with red and this is such a perfect red color as well this is in plastic so it might be a bit hard to see but this is a great red color I have 500 grams and I kind of want to make something for myself but I'll have to see if I find like the perfect pattern to make this 
just this but I think this could turn into such a cool something because the color is just everything but <laughs> I have grown my yarn stash a bit uh, <laughs> this week as well but um, I am quite comfortable with the big yarn stash I've found I think the most important part with a yarn band to me is not necessarily that I don't grow my yarn stash but I want to make sure that I don't in like a fit of inspiration end up buying even more yarn because I want to save money and uh, not spending all my money and on yarn and I also want to actually get through all of the projects I am excited about and not always just knit whatever I'm inspired for that I don't have the yarn for at that moment so I'm still uh, going to have myself on a yarn band but I'm not stressed that my stash is growing necessarily but that is all I have for this week I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast if you did please leave a like and a comment and if you want to see more please subscribe bye